creation suddenly articulate with a thousand tongues to lift one cry then from north to south and east to west we'd hear christ be magnified
Hey, Bedrock Roanoke, so glad you could join us for worship online today. If it's your first time today, or if you have a prayer request that we can be praying for, please let us know in the comments below, or you can email us at info at bedrockroanoke.com. If you call Bedrock Church home, uh, please know that you can give online at bedrockroanoke.com slash give, and know that your gifts go to support ministries around the world. So thank you very much for your generosity in that. Right now, before we get going, we, we do this thing when we're live called Shut It Down, and it's where we just take a second and lay all of our cares at the feet of Jesus. And I know we have a lot of cares right now. And so I want you to take a second with your family and just gather around and pray. I want you to pray that God would move in your heart today through the Word, that He'd move in your heart through the music you're about to listen to, and that He would change you from the inside out. Sometimes we come to church not expecting anything. And so today I want you to take a second and be expectant for God to move in your life.
Thank you, Jesus. I was a prisoner. Now I'm not. With your blood, you, you bought my freedom. Hallelujah for the cross. Good morning, Bedrock. It is good to be together with you, even though we're doing that virtually from our homes this morning and trying to flatten the curve of this COVID-19 coronavirus thing. I uh, hope that you've had the opportunity to get out this weekend uh, with social distancing, of course, and to enjoy the warmth that we've had through the weekend. You know, we've been working uh, really hard to try to figure out how to keep our church family connected, and you guys are doing a great job of that. Jeremiah and I both love the, uh, the reports that we're getting back in of the Zoom meetings and some of the pictures that have been posted on Facebook. So keep that up. Keep that up. Um, as you can tell, we have also tried to uh, streamline our streaming, so to speak, or to improve the quality of what you're seeing on Facebook and YouTube this morning. So um, I hope that that's working out for you as well. I know last week Facebook had a problem and uh, actually crashed because I think every church on the East Coast was trying to stream at 11 o'clock. Uh, somebody told me what a great problem to have that the churches in America actually crashed Facebook. It's neat that uh, that's one of the things that's going viral right now, uh, pardon the pun, instead of some of the other things that are taking place. Uh, but what's the next step for us? What do we need to be doing now to remember that we are the church? And what is the church supposed to be doing besides having uh, Facebook meetings and having online streaming and those type of things because the church is not four walls. Um, it's incumbent upon each and every one of us to be the church. If you recall that Jeremiah shared with us uh, way back at the beginning of the year, the vision for Bedrock Roanoke for 2020, and that is that we are trying to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. And that comes directly out of Ephesians 4, uh, verses 11 and 12, and it says, And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and the teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. So the question that I would pose for each of us this morning is in the midst of this coronavirus outbreak, what does it mean to be the church? Well, let's look at a few other scriptures that kind of highlight that for us. Uh, first from Galatians 6.2, Paul writes, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. You see, we can be in this together even though we are separated. So we need to be checking on each other. We need to be holding each other up and indeed bearing one another's burdens. Um, Hebrews 3.13 tells us, but encourage one another daily. You see the emphasis there on daily? Uh, we still have telephones and text messages and, and even conversing in the street as long as you maintain your six foot distance in the neighborhood. But encourage one another daily as long as it is called today so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. You see, we have to protect one another. Um, I've heard it said that, the, uh, that an idle mind is the devil's workplace. I don't think that's in the Bible, but it's a proverb. And that's a thing that we have to make sure that when we're in our homes and we're experiencing the social distancing, that we don't get carried away into what the world would tell us is the right way to go. Um, another one is 1 Thessalonians 5, 14. And Paul writes, And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who were idle and disruptive, encourage the disheartened, help the weak, be patient with everyone. Um, Stephanie and I did a video earlier this week that you may have seen, and the patience with everyone isn't always 
come naturally when we're together 24 seven. So it's time to exhibit a little bit of extra grace and to encourage the disheartened and to help the weak. Who are the weak? Maybe it's senior adults in your family or in your community that you can help with that. And lastly, Romans 15, 2 says, let each of us please his neighbor for his good to build him up. You see, Bedrock, this is an opportunity for us to be involved in our community, to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Yes, we still need to maintain the social distancing. Absolutely. We still need to maintain our in-home quarantine for those of us who are affected in order that we might flatten the curve. But that doesn't mean we become isolated. We need to reach out to our community. And part of that is, uh, of that equipping is to make resources available. So we want to share with you this morning some of the things that we've been able to post on our website. So let's just take a quick look at our website this morning. If you look at the website right here on our homepage, you can see the uh, COVID-19 update. And if you click on that button, what you'll see, first of all, as it transitions over, that the, uh, you'll see eyes to see opportunities. There are three different buttons or links that you can click on there. And that will allow you to let us know, as the leadership of Bedrock, where you're able to help others. You can also click the middle button and that says, hey, I need some help. If we don't know what your needs are, we certainly can't help to meet them. And of course, the third one there is for online giving. Um, I know right now it's difficult to put your cash and checks, your tithes and offerings in the offering tower. You can continue to mail those in to the mailing address, and we do check the mail weekly. But the easiest thing is to give online at bedrockroanoak.com slash give. Right below those links, you'll see another opportunity that says, serve small and make a big difference. Um, this is really cool. Jeremiah has been doing a lot of work to compile some resources and some ideas of things that you can use to reach into your community. One of those is the Nextdoor app. Uh, you may not be familiar with that, but it's almost like a, uh, uh, a neighborhood Facebook where you can just post comments and suggestions and, and link together with your neighbors. Uh, Jeremiah actually went on there yesterday and just said, hey guys, here I am. I'm in the neighborhood. If you need anything, let me know. And he's already getting some responses to that. So that's another way to keep connected in your community. Now the last one is down there at the bottom of that, and it's a form that you can print as a PDF. Okay, so let's take a look at what that would be. If you print that form off, this is something that you can use to actually uh, put in a neighbor's mailbox on his front door. You don't even have to make physical contact with this. And it's basically introducing yourself and finding out, again, how can you help? Because not all of our neighbors have the next door app. But this is a personal touch of a way that one-on-one -on -one, you can reach out to those in your community. And you'll notice on there that even using that form, we're still maintaining the guidelines that have been recommended by the CDC, by the government, um, to maintain social distancing and yet be the hands and feet of Jesus. So please let us know what you're doing. We want your feedback. You can make comments on the Facebook page today as you watch this. You can email us at info at bedrockroanoke.com or just reach out via the text, whatever works for you. A phone call always works. Let us know what you're doing because you've got some ideas we haven't even thought of on how to be the hands and feet of Jesus at this point. Well, as we transition this morning from talking about all this going on in our world, we do want to continue our series of Balanced. And you know that we've been talking about finances from the book of Proverbs throughout all this. Um, interestingly enough, when we get to today's topic, you're going to say, well, that's already happening. But let's go ahead and, and back up a little bit and talk about where we've been in the series so far. Balanced, biblical principles for managing our finances. If you recall the first week, Jeremiah did a great job of balancing the baseball bat. And what we're talking about, there's two sides of the coin. Uh, Proverbs is very rich with ideas for, for managing our finances and not being incredibly rich and not being incredibly poor. But to look at both sides of the coin on that. Second, we, secondly, we looked at the legacy of laziness. Uh, if you recall that Jeremiah talked about the, uh, the industrious nature of the colony of ants. The fact that they're working and planning ahead and taking care of everything and not just sitting around being lazy. Um, interestingly, I talked to some folks um, this week that were talking about 
the end times. And you know, here we are, we've got pestilence, we've got not necessarily famines in the United States, but we certainly have this virus attacking their signs and wonders. And, and folks are saying, some folks are saying, maybe this is the end times. Uh, maybe we don't need to keep working. Maybe we just sit back and wait for Jesus. But it's not time for that. No man knows the hour or the day. And we're to keep at what we are doing until he actually shows up. So that legacy of laziness encourages us to plan ahead for the future. Last week, of course, Jeremiah shared with us about keeping up with the Joneses and the things that Joneses don't tell you. You know, it's easy to always want to be somewhere that we're not, to want what someone else has. And that's certainly not going to help us in any way, shape, or form. We need to be content in our circumstances, whether rich or poor, and to do what the Lord has commanded us to do. Well, that brings us to today. Now, when we planned this series way back, we certainly didn't see that we would be in the circumstance that we are across the United States today, both with the COVID-19, but also what that's doing to our economy. So what is the title of today's message? Well, before we get there, let's take a moment and pray together. Father, we do thank you so, so much for watching over us, for keeping us, for helping us, um, for encouraging us. Lord, we thank you for the church that is bedrock and the churches across America who are doing everything they can to reach out in the community. And we pray that your kingdom would grow. Uh, we know that we are your hands and feet, and yet you grow the kingdom. So I pray as we dig into your word this morning that we would be prepared for what it has to say to us, that we would uh, continue to learn from you, that your Holy Spirit would work in us. And we do pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. So today, saving for a rainy day. What does that mean to save for a rainy day? Well, I would venture to say that all of us could say that the rainy day is probably here. Uh, when you read the news of the layoffs and folks in our own community and in our own church who have lost jobs, uh, who, whether it be temporary or permanent due to all the things that are going on, the rainy day is here. But let's look at what lessons we can gain from this and what we can learn from this um, and see where is that going to take us or how did we get in the situation that we're in. So the first thing I'd like to ask you this morning with regard to this is, did you get your tax refund? Did you get your tax refund before the virus outbreak? And if you did, what'd you do with it? What did you do with that? Is that part of your rainy day fund where you're saving that for circumstances like that popped up with this virus? Or maybe a house that's leaking or a roof that needs to be repaired, or the car that broke down on the way to work? Or did you say, aha, now I can keep up with the Joneses because I got a tax refund and I've always been wanting that new gadget, whatever that may be for you. Well, what if you got the tax refund after the outbreak? What did you do with it? Was that your rainy day fund? Or were you able to use that to help others or to make things right when the economy kind of took a nosedive. So the question there is, are you one in the storm that we're having right now that says, boy, am I glad that I was prepared for this? Or are you one of the ones that said, if only I had seen this coming, I could have been ready. You know, the Bible talks about that in the parable of the 10 virgins. Uh, the 10 virgins who were supposed to keep their oils lit at night, and some of them were ready, and some of them weren't. And those that weren't missed out. So even if you have not been prepared to this point in the midst of this storm, there's still lessons we can learn because I, you think this is going to be the end of it? You know, as long as we're on the earth and the earth is a broken place and sin is in the world, there's going to be more rainy days. And when we have more rainy days, we can be prepared. Maybe we were for this one, maybe we weren't. But we can be, and that's what we want to look at this morning is the importance of and the biblical principles that come from Proverbs when we go to examine what does it mean for our rainy day. So let's learn from this. We cannot predict the outcome, but we must prepare for the possibilities. That's just part of what the world comes to and what the Bible tells us. So why don't we do that? Why don't we save? What are some of the reasons that we use for not saving? Um, perhaps we're just disorganized. 
Well, what is disorganized? I, I would pose to you that disorganization is actually pro poor priority establishment. Try to say that one five times. Poor priority establishment. We have a tendency to deal with the urgent rather than the important in all aspects of our lives, whether it be time management, whether that be uh, financial management, whether it be taking care of the tasks in front of us or a to-do list. But the other part of that with the poor priority management is also some laziness. Do you remember the ants? Jeremiah told us about the ants and how industrious they are. Um, I'm also reminded of the story of Noah and the ark. Noah is working diligently to build the ark. And if you remember, all the folks around him were making fun of him because it had never rained and they didn't understand. We're just gonna go on with life as normal, not learning any kind of lessons from our past. And Noah was working diligently to take care of that. Another reason that we may not be preparing for the future is materialism. You know, we are a society of instant gratification. Um, how many times, and I told a story years ago in, in another, uh, another teaching moment about the differences, this is gonna sound really silly, but oatmeal. You know, you got, oatmeal is oatmeal. When you buy oats, you gotta cook it. And I started doing some research on the difference between the kind of oatmeal that I grew up with that my mama put on the oven, on the stove, and you had to cook it for five, 10 minutes, something like that. And then you go to the store and you see quick oats. Well, they cook in half the time. And then you go a little bit farther down the aisle and you get instant oatmeal. Cooks in a microwave in one minute. Well, what's the difference? The difference is how finely the oatmeal is chopped up, period. That's all it is. And what that's for is because of our society of instant gratification, I can't be waiting five minutes for my oatmeal to cook. I only have one minute for my breakfast because that's the way we've gotten to be with that instant gratification. You see, the other problem with that instant gratification mindset, and I really want you to think about this one, we don't think of our future needs because of today's wants. Let that sink in for a minute. We don't think of our future needs because of today's wants. Not today's needs but today's wants. I don't know about you, but that kind of strikes home with me. You got a few extra coins jingling in your pocket and there's something you got your eye on, and it's a whole lot easier to go buy that, whether it be the new latest greatest iPhone or a new Xbox, or uh, a, in my case, it's probably a tool that I may or may not need right now, but it sure is nice and I sure would like to have that thing. And someday I might want to do some woodwork and someday that might be beneficial for me, but I want it today. When in reality, I should be putting that away for that rainy day. I don't know if that hits home with you or not, but it's something to keep in mind that we don't think of our future needs because of today's wants. You know, Proverbs 21, 20 speaks to that and it says, precious treasure and oil are in a wise man's dwelling, but a foolish man devours it. Think about that. Precious treasure and oil are in a wise man's dwelling, but a foolish man devours it. Wow. Another thing that can keep us from being providential in our savings for a rainy day is simply pride. Um, did you, again, going back to what Stephanie and I talked about earlier this week uh, with the pride factor, it can't happen to me. You know what? Rainy days don't happen to me. I'm, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. He's got my back all the time. Nothing bad's going to happen to me. And besides, it's always the other guy that gets sick, or it's the other guy who has a car wreck, or the other guy whose car breaks down. I got this made, and if it does, I can fix it myself. It's nothing but selfish pride that keeps us sometimes from not taking care of our needs of the future when we look at today. So what are our real goals and points for this morning? The first point I want to share with you is that it is wise to try to gain financial security. It is wise to gain financial security. How do we do that? Well, Proverbs 13, 11 shares that with us. Wealth gained hastily will dwindle, but whoever gathers little by little will increase it. Get rich schemes. I'm gonna get rich overnight. You know, how many times have you heard if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. You see, it's so easy for us to see that somebody 
made millions on the market. You're probably even hearing now that there's folks, maybe even uh, I think government officials, who pulled out of the stock market right before the crash and now they're gonna reinvest it while the market's low and they're gonna get rich overnight. Maybe that's works, but that's a worldly definition of preparing for the future. You see, wealth gained hastily will dwindle. Easy come, easy go. But whoever gathers little by little will increase it. It's a long process preparing for a rainy day. And sometimes that can be a little bit disheartening because it just seems like we can't get there but a little bit at a time. You know, terrible analogy, I'm sure, but it's kind of like me trying to lose weight. I don't get very excited if I lose a half a pound. I want to lose 40 pounds. I want to lose 50 pounds. And if I'm not doing that quickly enough, it's easy to give up, isn't it? But the same thing can be said of our financial wisdom when we're beginning to save for a rainy day. But the other part of that is that it's futile to trust in it, okay? So it's wise to try to gain financial security, but it's futile to trust in it. Have you looked at your 401k for those of you that have one? You know, that's the other thing the world's up in arms about right now. The COVID-19 hits and by golly, we're down 20%. Okay. But God's still God and God is still in control. And that's where we need to focus. Because you see Proverbs eleven twenty eight 28 tells us that whoever trusts in his riches will fall. But the righteous will flourish like a green leaf. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be rich in this world. But the righteous trust in Jesus. Where does our righteousness come from? It's not in anything I do. Our righteousness comes from a salvation through a relationship with Jesus Christ. Life's always going to have surprises. But you got to remember also, in, in Matthew chapter 6, when Jesus was talking about the lilies and the sparrows, and he's saying, I got you. You see, the lilies of the field are most beautiful plants. Gorgeous flowers, and yet they do nothing to care for themselves. Or the sparrows who go from day to day and eat, and yet the Lord takes care of them. Will he not surely take care of us as well? Again, this is not to discount and to say, well, God's going to take care of me, so I'm going to be lazy. No, this is a time to understand that we need to put our faith and our trust in Jesus and not in a 401k or a savings account or fancy cars or big houses or any of the things that, that the world idolizes. So that's our first point. It's wise to try to gain financial security, but futile to trust in it. And as we move on down the road here, we notice that the point two is that the wise will know their current financial status and their future plans. Do you know where you are today financially? There's some, that, and, and I saw a, a show, a video, excuse me, a little meme the other day about a budget. Budget? What's a budget? I've never heard of a budget. Do you live on a budget? Or do you indeed say, there's money here, so let's go spend it, and we'll worry about tomorrow? Do you run out a month before you run out of your money? Or do you run out of your money before you run out of your month? Because you see, you've got to know your current status, and you also have to know your future plans. Look at Proverbs 27, 23 and 24. Know well the condition of your flocks, and give attention to your herds, for riches do not last forever, and does a crown endure to all generations? Now we in the church, we talk about the elders having a flock, but this isn't really what it's talking about. You have to understand the context in which this was written, and it was written in a society that was pre predominantly made up of herders. So they would have really related to this. What are your assets? When, when it says here, to know the condition of your flocks and give attention to your herds, think of that as your assets. Know the condition of your assets today. Do you know where your money is? Do you know where it goes? What, what's going on with all of that? Do you know your assets versus your debts? How big is the comparison between those? Do you have assets and debts or do you have assets and debts? And how are you going to repair that? How are we going to fix that? Those are the kind of things that we want to look at today. You see, if, if I had $10 in income, and I had $10 in income, and I want to say, what am I going to do with this $10 in income? And you're going to see this a little bit later in more detail when you watch the video that goes with our session four in your life groups in the balanced workbook. But you're going to see that if they have $10, that 
The first of those $10, the 10%, that goes to God, and that's my tithe. What do I do with the second 10%? That goes to the rainy day fund. And now I build my budget on the $8 remaining. And as I said, you'll see that in the videos this afternoon, and you can find those on the Bedrock Learner YouTube channel through your life groups. There's also, um, within that workbook, there's a lot of tools that you can use to plan for uh, debt retirement, for budgeting. Um, and if you're part of your life group, I hope you've already got that balanced book. If you're not a part of, your, of a life group, I encourage you to join one. Again, bedrockgrownope.com, and you can find a link to join a life group. And if you're not able to do that right now, we can get you a downloadable version of the, the notebook of the balanced workbook because it's got some great tools in that and you can email us at info at bedrockroanoke.com and we'll get you a copy of that in a PDF format that you can download and use. So I do ask, do you save what's left over at the end? You know, some folks, and, and honestly, this is what I did much, much, year, many, many years ago when we were much, much younger. Our savings plan was, if we have any money left at the end of the month, we'll put that into a savings account. The savings account ended up at zero, month after month after month, because that just doesn't work, folks. We can always find somewhere that we need to spend that money rather than to put it into savings. If you're not starting off with that, it's not going to work. You know, there are so many ways, and again, you'll, you'll talk about this in your life groups with the practical applications of what we're talking about today. There are so many ways that we can figure out how to spend money that we don't have. But we hesitate to look at how we can save money that we're spending foolishly. You know, it's, the drive throughs right now obviously are very, very crowded because people can't go to the restaurants, and I do believe we need to support the local economy and help those folks out. But what's the difference in the price of a cup of coffee in your house and the price of a cup of coffee at Starbucks? If you just did that every day, think of what your rainy day fund would look like. So there's all kinds of avenues like that. But I encourage you to spend some time this week by yourself if you're a single or, or don't have someone that you're sharing a home or finances with or your spouse or your roommate or whatever and lay your cards on the table. Let's take a look this week and lay it all out there and say, what are our assets and what are our debts? And again, the workbook will help you doing all of those kind of things. So the wise will know their current financial status and their future plans. The third point I want to share with you this morning is that your financial security has nothing to do with your eternal security. Hear me clearly on this. As important as it is to plan for your financial security, that has nothing to do with your eternal security. Proverbs 11.4 tells us that riches do not profit in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from death. You see, this is a huge concept. This is well beyond Proverbs. We're talking right now some heavy-duty theology and salvation of, because it says riches do not profit in the day of wrath. When is the day of wrath? Each one of us is going to come before the throne of Christ, accountable for our actions, and as believers... We're still going to be accountable for what we've done. But the first and foremost is we're going to be accountable as to whether or not we are declared righteous. You see, but righteousness delivers from death. This is where we're talking about that eternal security. Because if, if you or I, after we die or after Jesus comes back, whichever comes first, and he says, I do not know you, I never knew you, regardless of what you've done, regardless of how much wealth you've accumulated, and he says, I do not know you. Be gone from me. That's eternal death. So the money doesn't matter at that point. What matters at that point is a relationship with Jesus Christ. When Jesus looks at you and he sees you, does he see the earthly you, the sinner you, that never confessed your sins, that never repented from your sins, that never accepted the gift of salvation that comes only through Jesus Christ? when he died on the cross in our place? Or does he see his own son? Does God see his own son because his blood covered you and me? You see, as a believer in Jesus Christ, 
when I come to that day, he's not going to see Joe the sinner. He's going to see Joe the adopted son. The adopted son that's covered by the blood of Jesus and has that righteousness that this particular proverb speaks of. So I'm asking you today, is that where you are? Is that where you are today? Are you banking on your financial security? Or are you banking on your eternal security through a relationship with Jesus Christ? Proverbs 18, verses 10 and 11 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous man runs into it and is safe. A rich man's wealth is his strong city and like a high wall in his imagination. You see, a rich man can count on, I don't need God. I've got all this wealth and it's like a strong wall in my own imagination. But in the final days, that's not really what matters. You know, we've talked a lot this morning about planning for a rainy day. But are you ready for your final day? Let's review our three points very quickly that we talked about this morning. It's wise to try to gain financial security, but it's futile to trust in it. The second point, the wise will know their current financial status and their future plans. Very important stuff. But lastly, your financial security has nothing to do with your eternal security. Hmm. Are you ready for your final day? You know, more storms are going to come up. This is not, this COVID-19 isn't going to be the end of this. There's going to be something else and something else. And we do need to take the lessons we learn from Proverbs and the lessons we learn from enduring the storm that we're in right now. Because it's going to come again someday. You know, I was reminded, um, gosh, how many years ago now? Probably 15 years ago now. Uh, 2005, Hurricane Katrina. Hurricane Katrina down on the Gulf Coast uh, hit a lot of folks really, really hard. It was a major rainy day. And there were some folks in the church that I was in right now who had relatives down that way. And we actually put together a team and went down, uh, not all the way to the coast, we went down to Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And it was devastated, not to the point that the coast was, but there were trees down through roofs and roads were blocked and, and electricity was out and there was no water and there was no gasoline because the refineries were shut down in New Orleans. And people came together and people prepared. And I remember that as we were preparing each day to go out into that neighborhood and try to help with removing some trees or getting folks some bottled water or, or maybe a tarp over the roof or anything that we could do. Uh, the passage that came to mind in looking at all that devastation and what we need to cling to even today actually comes from Psalm 121. And Psalm 121 verses 1 and 2 says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Very appropriate for us in the valley as we can see the hills every day. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. You see, we need to be the Lord's hand and feet in our communities today and let folks know that what's going on right now, it's scary, sure. It's causing us to change our lifestyle a little bit, absolutely. But what really matters is a relationship with Jesus. You see, the Bible tells us that they will know that we are disciples if we love one another. But that love has to go outside the walls of our church or outside the walls of our homes as we're here right now. Safely, yes. But nonetheless, reach out to your neighbors. Write a card to someone. Send them a pizza. Check on the, those that just have babies. Do they need any diapers or formula or something that you can pick up at the store? Whether it be with a click list so you don't even have to go in the store or the Walmart free pickup or anybody that's delivering groceries right now. Take advantage of those opportunities to reach your community, to reach your neighborhood. And folks, if you're listening to this today, if you're seeing my face and hearing my voice, and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, all of those things are going to be futile in the last days. So I encourage you today, if the Holy Spirit is tugging on your heart, and you've never accepted Jesus as your Savior, today's the day that you can repent, that you can turn away from that sin, understand and tell Jesus, yes, Lord, I am a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. I'm tired of doing it my way. I need you. And accept his forgiveness. Turn your life over from your ways to his ways. 
and know that in the final days that your security is established. As a matter of fact, I'm going to pray with you this morning. And there's nothing magic about any words, but I just want to guide you through this. Um, if you've never accepted Jesus as your Savior, and again, understand there's no magic in the words. It's a matter of what's in the heart. But if you'll pray with me this morning, if you've never received Jesus, you can do that right now. So let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner, and I know that the Bible tells me that we are all are sinners, and yet, even while we were still sinners, that you died for me on the cross, that I might be considered righteous in your eyes and in the Father's eyes. So Lord, today I accept that gift of forgiveness for my sins. I turn away from my sins and turn toward you as my Lord. I want you to lead my life. I want you to lead my life from this day forward. I want to know more about you. I want to grow in you and to become more and more like you and to reflect your image in the world that we're in today. Lord Jesus, thank you for saving my soul. Thank you for saving my life. Amen. Folks, if you prayed that prayer this morning, I'm going to ask that you would comment on our Facebook page right now. And if you're not comfortable doing something like that, email us. Email us at info at bedrockrono.com because we want to reach out to you and help you to grow in the love of Jesus Christ. For the rest of us, Bedrock Church, you are sent this morning. And what I'm asking you to do this morning is to, to sit down with those around you, yes, for the financial security and make a plan and those kind of things, but, but look at the website again and figure out a way that you can serve in the community that you're in this morning. God bless you all. Stay.